What's up everyone, Adam Frader here, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you that number one exercise that you can be doing to build those core muscles, to build those abs. It's the most frequent question I get. Everybody wants to know what's the secret, what's the exercise, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you. Now, I don't wanna be scrutinized by people out there because I am gonna say this. If you wanna have good abs, then you need to be lean. And in order to be lean, it comes down to your diet and it comes down to your lifestyle. So there's not just one exercise that you can do all day long, let's say like bench press to build a big chest that you can do to build your core. There are exercises you can do to build core strength, to build muscle size, but they're not necessarily gonna get you shredded. Workouts like HIIT training, high intensity interval training, it's at a high enough intensity that you produce something called EPOC excess post oxygen consumption. What that means is your metabolic rate is increased for over 24 hours after you train. That means even when you're not training, you're a fat burning machine. Now, that's the goal is to achieve that epoch in your training. So what's the best single exercise to get us there? Well, there's a reason we are at the track today because that single best exercise is something that a lot of you probably rarely do and a lot of you may not have done since you were kids. And that is, sprinting. Absolutely the best biomechanically correct single exercise for your body as a human. As a human, we were meant to run. Jogging is not so natural. We were meant to sprint on our toes. We were meant to sprint to hunt. We were meant to sprint to avoid predators. So we are going to get back to our ancestral roots. We are going to sprint. It is the best way to get that intensity, to get your body to that excess post oxygen consumption. So you're not only burning while you're here sprinting, but you're burning in the days after it until your next workout. That's how you get shredded. All right, let me show you some do's and don'ts of sprinting, right? First off, let me give a shout out to my sponsor, TLF, Take Life Further. Honestly, I took this gear, I took this sponsor on because their gear is just so fresh. It is so soft and it's so functional. It looks great. Guys, check them out. Links below. Now, for the part you've all been waiting for, let's get rid of this mic and let's get this shirt off. All right, we are going to run sprints and I'm going to show you how you can get into it in the best possible way. If you're new to sprints or if you've been sprinting for a while, the number one thing that I want you to remember while you're starting off is don't get out and try to run your hardest. It's likely that you probably haven't run sprints in a really long time. This isn't a race, we're not at track practice. So when you take off, try to take off gradually. Build slowly up to speed as you get halfway. And when you're at the halfway mark, I want you at not quite a full sprint, but let's say 80%. Play around in that 80% range and don't try to hit 100 unless you're experienced in sprinting or unless you've been doing this now for four, five, six weeks and you've conditioned your body to go that hard. And let's be honest, your entire body, your entire frame from every moment that you strike the ground and every muscle that you move is involved in a sprint. So it is extremely intense, which is also why it is the best exercise. As your knees drive, your core is engaged. As you are driving, your core, your back, your quads, your hip flexor, your glutes, your hamstrings, your calves, your tibialis, everything is engaged in the body in a sprint, even your shoulders and your upper body. Do not be mistaking the power of sprinting. You do not need to do a long workout. You can train for about 20 minutes, but what I like to do is as follows. You're gonna measure out a space on the track. You can do this on a field. You can do this on the street in front of your house. And we're gonna do about 60 to 80 yards. If you're more of a beginner, shorter distance is better. And again, the goal is, you're gonna start at the beginning, you're gonna slowly build up to speed. When you get to the halfway mark, I want you at that 80% of top speed, and I want you to hold that and sustain that for a good amount of strides, three or four seconds. Not all the way through the finish line, start to decrease speed and finish softly, not too much impact on the knees by stopping quick. So that's the exercise, that's one rep. I want you to rest for 30 seconds between reps and I want you to do 10 of those. If you're new to this, that should just be your workout. If you're an expert, you can do that again and you can incorporate 200 meter runs where instead of trying to get to 80%, you sustain 75% for a longer period of time and work on endurance. All of these things will help you reach epoch, help you burn fat, engage those core muscles, and it's gonna get you shredded. I promise you, if you're not sprinting, this is the exercise that you need to do. now. The most important thing, if you're listening to anything, is to warm up properly. That does not mean stretching. Stretching will not benefit you and you could risk getting hurt. 
by stretching you're training your nervous system to get further into a range of motion that your body's not ready for when performing at that level of intensity so instead of stretching we warm up before we run a couple laps around the track at 50 percent a couple active mobility things i like to do knee raises i like to do toe touches i like to do lunges and again i like to run and if i'm going to be running sprints i like to slowly build up that percentage i start at 50 percent get to 60 get to 70 and you'll know you're warmed up when you're sweating your skin is sticky your body is warm that's all folks honestly if you're not sprinting add this to your workouts and you are going to see your body change you're going to see your athleticism change you're going to see your overall lifestyle change because you're going to release so many happy endorphins that are just going to make you that much better as an athlete as a person in everyday life if you like this video you know what to do hit that like button go ahead and subscribe i'll see you guys on the next one I'm gonna go run with this guy